All right, um, so we're back here. We're talking about Web Matrix and Razor and ASP.NET web pages, and I want to do uh, some simple demos that I've written. Um, we'll look at the syntax, uh, you know, some layout, sharing across files, um, it, helpers. We'll look at one, uh, you know, helpers that are already there, and then two, we'll show you how to get more helpers uh, that are being produced from Microsoft, and we'll actually take a look at a helper. Uh, someone else has written uh, forms, database access, grids, that kind of stuff. Um, then also just some of the other things that you can do. Um, let's see if I'll... Ah, yeah, some of the other helpers and some of the other things um, we'll mention. Um, don't have them in here specifically. Uh, charting, uh, file upload, the image manipulation. So there's a number of other helpers and features uh, that that you can use. So having said all this now, let's um, go off to the demos. Alright, so first off, this is uh, Web Matrix. And I've just started it up and opened up a application I've already got. Um, you'll see you've got, you know, a file listing, some things that you can do down here, you've got your code, and then some general actions that you can perform. Um, by the way, you'll notice that there's this Visual Studio uh, button. You can actually um, pull an application up and edit it in Visual Studio. So that capability is there. Um, we're just going to look at things right now in Web Matrix. So um, first off, just looking at uh, this app, this um, set of files application. Um, one thing that you'll notice here is the syntax. Um, Syntax is a little bit different. We're used to, you know, less than percent, percent greater than, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and you don't see that here. So we've got a little bit simpler syntax. Not sure how much of a big deal it is uh, to you, um, but it's a little bit different syntax. Um, then we can set up uh, what are called uh, layout pages. Um, so we would have, bring it up here. I've got a page here. Um, this is just a default page with a bunch of content inside of it, some uh, CSS. Then, notice this one piece right here. Render body. I'm going to take uh, content from my content page and basically shove it right into this spot. So um, when we look at the default page that we've got, We've got, we're going to have some tables, and in there, we're going to have some stuff inside of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. We'll go to um, Site, list some options that we can do. Uh, in this case, we're just going to open this up. This is going to run on the IIS, uh, de uh, the IIS Express dev server. So we'll start this guy up, and boom. So now I've got a page showing up. And I've got a bunch of Twitter feeds on it. And these are just search results that are coming in. Um, we see I've got our web matrix uh, search result. And you're probably saying, oh, okay, this is cool. Where did this come from? How did it, um, you know, how did it get here? What's going on? Let me see this uh, HTML. So just do a quick little view source on it. And notice. We've got most of our layout page. Well, not most of it, all of it, excuse me. Then you'll see this widget. And the widget is pulling in a bunch of JavaScript. And notice that this looks a lot like the data that's coming back. And it ends up that our content here, let's see if it'll show it all. This is our script that um, is displaying our search results. So when we have this page here, this guy outputs that content. So we're able to do search and we can then we can also pull in people's data. Now probably saying, okay, that's cool. What other kinds of helpers are there out there? And um Right now, Microsoft is producing a set of helpers 
and they're making them available over a um, RSS feed. So if you go into the underscore admin directory on an ASP.NET web matrix application, you'll see something, you know, some kind of administrative form. I'm going to log in on mine, and then bang, here are some helpers. And these are the helpers that are currently installed. I've got a face, Facebook helper, I've got the Microsoft um, web helper, I've got an OData helper, and I've got a Windows Azure storage helper. So this is what I can install into my application. And literally they make it this simple. You um, hit install or uninstall and it'll go, it'll download the helper and then it will be installed into your application. As you see, I just hit install and bang, it's there. So now now that I've shown you a helper, let's um, take a look at this. In let's take a look at a custom helper. Now, hopefully this will open up. I have an okay, good. This is a helper uh, for displaying data in YouTube or from YouTube videos from YouTube. Now I haven't written this. Um, I literally took someone's beta one helper and uh, updated it, but you know fairly easily we can go out we can grab the URL and then we can stick that appropriately into some HTML and output that HTML now just to show you this working oops excuse me we go back here we hit our default page now So now we're going to get this lovely guy right here who has his eyes closed and probably the most hideous YouTube video of all time, and it's displayed. And if I actually clicked on, you know, the little um, arrow, I could get it. So anyway, I think that's cool. I think that's up and going. Now, another example is sometimes it's important to want to be able to get JSON data out. So we were trying to figure out, okay, well, how are we going to go do that? It's actually fairly simple. Let me just show you. Click here, and I should have another window open up, and bang, here's some JSON data. Now, this is actually a fairly simple idea. We're going to, let's see, let me go back over here. This is it, fairly simple. We're going to do three lines of code, we're going to go and we're going to actually run a query against a database and in this case I did it with um, Indie Framework and Link. You actually, you don't have to go do that. This is just one of those things. I wanted to prove that I could do this because there have been some issues. People are concerned about, wait, we've got another database technology here. No, we don't. Here's the key piece, okay? It's JSON.encode. We take whatever our object is that comes out and we stick json.encode uh, or we pass it to json.encode and then call response.write and output and bang, we're getting our JSON data. And we could easily, just as easily have requested data off the query string or requested it out of the form for a post and we would have gotten our data as well. Now, we can go and we can work with forms so alright so the classic hello world and boom we've got this now how did we do it once again fairly simple I've got a form I've got you know, some label information, uh, I've got an input value, sorry, an input text field, and then I've got a button. And I just wired it up in JavaScript just because that's what I wanted to do to prove I could do it. Notice this one little interesting piece here. I can set the value on the input uh, text field, and I can do it in a fairly simple way as opposed to, you know, how I have to do this you know how you would think you would have to do it if you were outputting straight from the server side code so anyway I can go I can grab this it's 
you know, fairly simple to go create. Now, last little piece, I can output data into a grid. So notice that I've got um, this grid of information here. Just got two items, but it's you know fairly simple. That's our grid page. I've done a database query, but here's the key piece. I've got this grid control, sorry, grid helper, and I can output its HTML. I can define a set of grid, I'm sorry, a set of columns on it, and you know, here's the data that's going to be bound to it, and here is the um, title for that column. And one other interesting piece about this is if you look at, oops, if you look at the source on this, scroll down into this, it's looking pretty accessible to me, you know. You've got your headers, um, and I think that's that's definitely a very important thing. Um, if you ever dealt with accessibility, um, you know having the headers is always an important thing. So, all right, I hope you've um, enjoyed the. Oh, one last seem to be doing an excellent job for getting it. Um, all this example code is in uh, C Sharp. You can also do things in VB. The key pieces are um, you've got an at code as opposed to just an at um, bracket. And then you can say do a dim and create a string and blah. And then it'll be displayed out there. So let me just put that in. Oops, you gotta spell it right for it to be displayed. Example.vbhtml. Eh, you're close. Alright, and then we've got our output here. So, you know, C sharp supported, VB supported, um, you know, pick your language and go. All right, so I um, I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, quick look at ASP.NET web pages in Razor. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you guys on the flip side. Take care.